This video is sponsored by the multinational IA firm Crawford & Company. To be the best, you have to join the best at croco.com slash cat. Forget about everything that you hear on social media about how this is saturated and it's like there's there's no work and there's there is absolutely plenty of work. Every IA firm that I know of from the, the majors down to the little mom and pops are all desperate for good people. And the key word there is good. And how do you be good? You get trained, okay? You have to, you're not gonna get on the job training. You're not gonna get, you have to have the expectation that you're not gonna get those things. You're not gonna have paid training for sure in this industry because you're an independent contractor, right? Your responsibility to show up trained. This is Adjuster TV, Adjusters First. This video is sponsored by Hague Education. Use code ADJUSTERTV to get a 15% discount on damage assessment, CE training, industry certifications, books, and tools at HaigueEducation.com. And by Kaplik. Learn all about E&O and other insurance for adjusters at CPLIC.net slash AdjusterTV. You know, we talk about um, adjusters being out in the field and not being very good, and it's not because, you know, if, if you're somebody that's watching this and you don't really know that much about our industry, you know, but you have, there's a conventional wisdom about insurance companies and adjusters. And that's, the, that is that they're tr out there trying to like save money on the insurance company and deny everything and all this kind of stuff. And people believe that um, in their hearts and they're, they believe it and they're as convicted about that as they are about their faith or about whether the sun's going to come up from the East in the morning. Right. Um, they believe that the insurance companies are out to, you know, or, or it's going to always be a hassle. And the the truth of the matter is, is that I don't think there's in, there's no adjuster that I know of and I've ever heard of, and there's no incentive for adjusters to go out there and maliciously and knowingly deny things that they should be paying for. We're, you know, we're, uh, everything that we do is dictated by the policy, um, which is an agreement between the, the customer, the homeowner, the insurer, the policyholder, and the insurance company. Right. They agree to the agreement and that's this is what's covered. This is what's not not covered. The problem is, is isn't that there's malicious bad faith. The problem is, is that there is just like any other industry, there are varying levels of training. Right. And experience and competency. So I, I would say, you know, anytime that you if if. I would never assign to malice or an intentional bad faith what could probably be more appropriately assigned to just not knowing um, or a level of incompetence. And when I say incompetence, I don't mean that as in a derogatory way. I just mean that the person doesn't have the full skill set to complete the work that they're they're assigned to do. And you can lay blame all around on how, on why that happens. A big piece of it can go on the carriers. A big piece of it can go on the independent adjusting firms that we work for, and but the biggest piece for independent adjusters falls on on us, right? So we need to be, we need when we get out into the field, when we get work assigned to us, um, we need to not have the expectation if we're brand new that oh well I'm just going to show up, I'm going to get my license, my Florida license or whatever, and then I'm just going to show up and get on the job training, or I'm going to do a ride along or something like that, and that's going to be sufficient for me to be able to handle what in a lot of cases could be a complex situation with a lot of different la layers, um, a lot of different other actors involved, right? So contractors or public adjusters, um, not to mention the homeowner, right? Um, so what, as, as adjusters, I would say it's, it's absolutely incumbent upon us to show up trained. I, I saw it was a recent post in a Facebook group um, about people, you know, asking whether or not they should spend any money on training. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something. Um, th and this is a, a general statement about 2023 America. I can't speak for the rest of the world. Um, but what I see when I, you know, go to, the, you know, to, to go out shopping, to go to REI or to go to the grocery store or to go to wherever, and you walk by the front door of a taco place, Panda Express, you know, McDonald's, whatever it is, and they all have help wanted signs in them. And they're all offering $17 an hour 
$22. The Panda Express has a sign in front of their place for $22 an hour to scoop rice into a bowl, right? And I'm sure there's, there's certainly other, you know, things you got to do. You're a customer facing person, whatever it is. Um, but that's like my my first job out of college, I made $9 an hour, right? When I, my first like, not my first, but like my, the last job that I did in, t- in television, I made $15 an hour. I lived in Los Angeles. I had to have five roommates, right? And I was an associate producer at the Food Network, $15 an hour. And now you can just go anywhere, anywhere to any place and make at least that. Not because it's the minimum wage and not because it's like somebody's telling these companies to, but it's they're, they keep raising the, the wage rate to try to get somebody in there to help them. One of my favorite taco places in town closed its doors. They went out of business because they couldn't find people to come in and work. And there are a lot of people here. We're we're one of the places where everybody from the coastal areas are moving inland, you know, like people moving to Austin, Texas or to Florida or to Dallas or to Montana. We get a lot of people from coming over from the West Coast who don't want to be on the West Coast anymore. They want to be somewhere else here. And they're all here. And there are so we have, you know, a 50 percent more people than we did two years ago in our little valley, which is tens of not tens of maybe tens of thousands of people and nobody's working. You can't, there's no high school kids to work the drive through. There's no, you know, the the contractors that we're trying to hire are, you know, short handed, you know, they, they're, they're, they can't even find it's, it's, it's hard enough to find a skilled person who knows how to do electrical or who knows how to do HVAC or whatever. They can't find those people. So they're, they're trying to find anybody who they can just, hand a hammer to and just show them how to do this one thing and then show them how to do the next thing just to help them out. All of this to say that I believe um, more than ever that forget about everything that you hear on social media about how this is saturated and it's like there's there's no work and there's there is absolutely plenty of work. Every IA firm that I know of from the, the majors down to the little mom and pops are all desperate for good people. And the key word there is good. And how do you be good? You get trained. Okay. You have to, you're not going to get on the job training. You're not going to get, you have to have the expectation that you're not going to get those things. You're not going to have paid training for sure in this industry because you're an independent contractor, right? Your responsibility to show up trained. Um, you can get, there's, there's a lot of really low cost training out there that you can kind of cobble together and sort of piece together and maybe make something work out of it. There's higher level trainings. Like we have an adjuster TV, like MoCat has like veteran adjusting school, places like that, where we're going to try to give you the full, you know, everything that you need to know, including like time management and all that stuff. Um, and, and, but you're going to have to spend some money on it, right? Because it's not, we're not going to work for free and, Anything that's that's worth anything is is not going to be ninety nine dollars, right? If you're out there looking for ninety nine dollar, you know, Xactimate cert- certifications or whatever, you can probably find them. But is the quality going to be any good? Is it going to be taught by a person who actually has run claims in their life, who has more than who has, you know, Andy and I have accumulated like almost fifty years of experience in claims as adjusters, right? And we're teaching this stuff. So would you rather learn from us or from somebody that? you know, walked in off the street, you know, that they, they got put through an Xactimate uh, trainer certification, maybe, maybe not, but they've never handled a claim before. And they're just showing you where the buttons are in Xactimate. I don't know. My, my, my bottom line with all of this, and this is a bit of a rant monologue because it's, I really get exercised about this. It's that the industry is desperate for good people. It's desperate for people, period. But if you, if you can be good, and by good, I just mean like put in like 10% extra effort on this stuff, show up trained and put in a little bit of extra work while you're on your CAT deployments and you will always be working. You'll always be uh, somebody that the firms, the, any firms that you work for, they're going to recognize that you're putting in a little bit of extra effort on your customer service, your file accuracy, your closing, you know, at least a, a average or above average claims per day. Um you will, this, those are the people, by the way, that end up in the top 5% very, very quickly. And this is something I learned, you know, 20 years ago when I first got started. If I put in just a little bit of extra effort on this stuff, 
made an effort to close more claims and had those claims look really good. And it was really nice to the, the homeowner and the contractor and everybody else did the job. I'm not, you know, being nice doesn't mean just like writing people checks. It, it means being nice. Then I immediately shot to the very top of the, any first, any roster or first call list that I was on. And it wasn't like I was any better. I just put a little bit of extra thought into doing this. And I, I, I recognized that it was a priority to, to be faster and, but maintain good quality. Um, so I, I think that the bottom line for my rant here, and I don't know, you probably could add something to this, Andy, is that more than ever, especially these days, especially in this work environment where you've got 10 million open jobs and 5 million people looking for them, um, that it's easier than ever to distinguish yourself, to put in the kind of work that people used to put in, the work ethic we used to have not very long ago, you're going to beat out the, the the mass of people that are like looking for an easy, easy paycheck, like an easy hundred thousand dollars or whatever that they see all, all over the internet. It's not easy, right? It's it's tough, um, but it's not impossible, and it's only really super tough in the very beginning when you're learning everything. After you kind of get over the learning curve, it, it the tough parts are like no big deal, right? It gets a lot easier, and you make you're able to make even more money, serve more people, build a, a really cool lifestyle for yourself and your family and, you know, uh, have that good work-life balance. Um, but we're, the, the industry is absolutely desperate for good people and it doesn't take a whole lot. You just got to have a little skin in the game up front. So I don't know, Andy, you want to add anything to that? Yeah. And so it's interesting. I, I think the worst place to go for advice is social media because I don't know what it is. It seems like a, a breeding ground for angry people. But you have these people that say you shouldn't pay for any training. You should go get, uh, go to YouTube and get free training. Well, think about it this way. If you wanted to, even a hobby, not, not even talking about careers, if you wanted to take up fishing and you didn't want to buy any tackle, any fishing rods, anything, that's probably, you could probably go to YouTube and figure out how to fish, but you're still going to need the gear. But now we're talking about a career. So look at it as an investment. Um, I remember three years ago emailing you when I was working the Drecho storm in Iowa. And I was like, what is going on with these independent adjusters? They're terrible. Um, and from that point forward, I got to realizing it's like they want to get into this career because, as I was told by a new independent adjuster, it's life-changing money. But you do have to, to get that life-changing money. You, there are certain things you have to do. So I'm a big Dave Ramsey guy, and he has professionals in every market area that he vets, and they're called endorsed local providers. And what they require from these endorsed local providers is they have to know what they're doing. They have to have been in the field for a certain amount of time. But the main thing is they have to have the heart of a teacher. And you can go get training, uh, cheap or expensive, I think, honestly, the kind of, I don't necessarily wouldn't recommend like the $50 training because there's probably not much value in that. But the main thing you need to look for when you're looking for training is the heart of a teacher. Because if you fail, then that's really going to affect them. And I know it affects us. If we hear about somebody failing that took our training or that we mentored, it really affects us. Um, so I would go get training from somebody who has the heart of a teacher and you have to invest in yourself. Uh, after working for this good neighbor insurance company, I went to work for an IA firm for about nine months. And so I got to see behind the scenes as to the, the struggle these IA firms have putting experienced good people out in the field. Anybody can fill up a roster, but they need those folks who have the experience and you're saying, wait, as a new person, I don't have experience. You're right. As a new person, you don't have the luxury of experience. And so you have to go get training and you have to go get good training from somebody who wants to see you succeed. I remember working, um, well, as three years ago when I was working the Drecho storm, I had to go out on a second inspection and this independent adjuster replaced 32 square feet of decking where a limb went through the roof but they replaced four shingles. So if you do the math, that really doesn't work out that well because 32 square feet, you have four shingles, doesn't work out. Maybe they thought that they were doing it right. With a little bit of coaching and a little bit of training, 
she would have wrote a better estimate and saved a customer for this insurance company. And these IA firms are graded on the people they put out in the field by the carriers. And so if you are sitting there thinking, well, I can't get a deployment. Well, you need, you need training, build your network, but absolutely you got to get training because you don't have the luxury of experience. Now I don't necessarily need training. I just need to keep doing it. And so just continuing working claims, that's going to keep my skills sharp. Continuing in the industry, that's going to keep my skills sharp. But if you know absolutely nothing, then you're not going to probably get a deployment unless you get some good training. Now, I will say this, you can sometimes break through on a hurricane. That's probably not the best way to do it, just hang out and not do anything and then hoping you're going to get a deployment on a hurricane to prove yourself because you're probably going to wash out. And then these insurance carriers, if you do something really bad and like you screw up something, then they're going to tell the IA firm, no more, uh, I don't, we don't want any more assignments with this person. And even if you jump to a new independent firm, that's still going to carry with you. Just because you show up uh, on, uh, if you're working for Crawford, let's say, and you mess something up and then you jump to pilot trying to work for the same carrier, you're still going to be on the same list. And so I would look at this as your career, but also you're, you're a small business. And so invest in yourself. So you absolutely have to have training. Watch the full episode for free right now, only on adjustertvplus.com. In a world where you can be anything, be an adjuster.